Go ahead, Mr. Carey. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Tonight is Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. This meeting is being held virtually in accordance with the governor's executive order. Ellen, may we have roll call, please? Yes, Mr. Carey. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Granato? Present. Mr. Lesser? Here. Mr. Michaels? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Absent. Mr. Riley? Absent. Vice Chairperson, Mr. Healy? Chairperson, Mr. Carey? Present. And Weathersfield High School student representative, Tiago Wynn? Here. All present. Thank you, Ellen. If we could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving on to approval of minutes. Do I have a motion to improve the April 27th, 2021 regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any comments or discussion? Seeing none with a motion and a second on the table, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. So noted. Thank you. Motion carries. Public comment. Mr. Emmer, anyone on the phone? I have uh, no one on the phone, uh, Mr. Perry. Very good. And we had no emails, so public comment is now closed. Communications, Mr. Emmett. Thank you, Mr. Carey. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, start off with uh, just a recognition of uh, our Weathersfield teachers. Um, last week, as you may know, it was Teacher Appreciation Week. And I must say that over the past year, our teachers have gone above and beyond the call of duty in terms of making sure that our children stay engaged, making sure that they're learning, and making sure that they're still connected to the district. Um, who would have thought that we would have had to figure out how to um, conduct dual lessons within a classroom, both through technology, remotely, as well as in-class learning. Um, through it all, our Weathersfield teachers persevered, they were resilient, and they made sure that our students got the best possible education. So I'd like to start off this evening with saying a huge thank you to the Weathersfield Public School teachers for everything that they do for our students and our community. And also this week marks Nurses Appreciation Week. And I can think of no other group of professionals more deserving of recognition also than our school nurses. From the beginning of the pandemic, they have been at the forefront of our efforts to keep our students safe and healthy. They've stayed connected to the CDC and the DPH, and they were on the front lines of isolation rooms, contact tracing, and allaying parents and teachers' fears of the COVID um, virus. Again, we say thank you very much to the nurses of the Weathersfield Public Schools for keeping us safe and healthy. Also this evening, a couple of other items for you. Uh, we uh, do wanna let you know that we will be having a uh, facilities and maintenance committee meeting next week. Uh, this will focus on the building project work. Uh, at this point in time, the focus next week will be to take a look at the updates to the cash flow. Um, and in addition to that, talk about a communication plan moving forward. Um, as you know, at this point in time, there has been no decision made with regard to which scenario we are going to move forward with, um, but we've been doing a lot of the behind the scenes work along with the uh, facility study, as you know, from phase one, we had the enrollment study, which we're in the process of updating. Um, so um, that is coming up uh, next week. Uh, I want to let everyone know, uh, this is big news. The FDA has approved the Pfizer vaccine for um, children aged 12 to 15. Um, so I will tell you that I have already reached out to Hartford HealthCare, not wasting any time. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that Hartford HealthCare um, does not see the need to do a closed clinic, meaning they have enough vaccine to be able to schedule appointments with families or to take even walk-ins. So 
Um, we have 1,198 students, uh, both in district as well as in outplacements that will meet the criteria of age 12 to 15. So tomorrow morning, we'll be sending out a communication specific to that group that will include the link to Hartford Healthcare. So we're looking at um, the ability to start uh, administering shots as early as Thursday. So this is very exciting news and coupled with the 16 to 21 year old bracket that's already had the opportunity for vaccinations, we are getting closer. At this time, Pfizer is doing trials um, for children age two to 11 at our DPH call today. Um, there was discussion about those trials wrapping up late this summer and the potential of Pfizer going before the FDA for approval uh, for two to 11 uh, late summer. So there's light at the end of the tunnel. I uh, do wanna let everyone know at this point in time with regard to vaccinations, um, they are not mandatory. So the district is not mandating, but certainly from a health perspective, um, what we hear from the CDC, what we hear from the DPH and our local health director, Charles Brown, um, the vaccine is effective in warding off COVID. And for those that do get that breakthrough infection, um, the severity of the illness is greatly diminished. So again, uh, this is great news and uh, parents of students age 12 to 15, please be alert. You'll be getting a communication tomorrow morning. I uh, want to give everybody an update with regard to remote learning. Uh, the state has made the decision that as of next year, remote learning will no longer be a requirement for districts to provide. Um, we're gathering our data now, and we're really kind of honing in on students in grades uh, K through six. Um, at this point in time, our students in grades seven through 12 all have access to the vaccine. Um, and we're not thinking that a remote learning option is something that's gonna be necessary. With regard to our students in K through six, as I'm speaking with you this evening, we have uh, 96 students at the elementary level K through six um, who are currently in remote learning. Um, we will be reaching out to those parents to uh, talk about each situation and uh, prepare for next year. At this point in time, uh, I am not thinking that it's gonna be likely we're going to uh, move forward with a remote learning plan. Our plan is to have all students in person for next year. Again, we may have some extenuating circumstances with some uh, specific families, um, but we're glad to have our students back in. And I think the data has shown over the course of this year, as we phased everyone in, our mitigation strategies have been effective and uh, we have not seen spread within our schools. So that coupled with the potential availability of vaccine, we're hopeful that the 2021-2022 school year features students in person. And again, as I had mentioned uh, the, the previous uh, Friday update, not last week, but the week before, uh, the percentage of students in person at the elementary level uh, ranges between 90 and 96 percent. Um, we are at approximately 85 percent at the middle school and the high school. Um, still about 112 seniors that have not yet returned. Um, that seems to be the biggest group. So we have about 70 percent of our uh, total student population at Weathersfield High School back in person. So. Um, I'll have more information forthcoming on this. We're expecting a little more guidance from the state. Um, there is some legislation that is currently um, working its way through, and that may uh, make some adjustments to the remote learning expectations. But again, want to make sure that the public is aware of that. Uh, we have been extraordinarily busy uh, at the Stillman building with regard to interviews for the teacher of the year and the paraeducator of the year. Um, we conducted our interviews for the uh, paraeducator of the year last Tuesday, and then just yesterday we interviewed candidates for teacher of the year. At this time, uh, we are formulating our winners and we will be surprising them prior to the end of the uh, school year. So it's certainly a momentous event and we will make sure that we get that message out to the community once uh, those individuals are selected and honored. Um, also had the opportunity uh, last week to participate in interviews with uh, uh, CREC teacher resident candidates. Um, so I had the opportunity to meet with uh, seven candidates. Again, I think that the process that uh, we've gone through with the selection uh, has been robust and I am very much looking forward uh, to having two residents come to the Weathersfield Public Schools to work with master mentor teachers and uh, hone their skills and ultimately become parts of the Weathersfield Public Schools. 
Uh, and finally, just want to make sure that everyone is aware, I'm sure Tiago will provide a report, but we continue to do an extensive amount of work with regard to uh, end of year activities. Um, so Tiago, myself, the rest of the uh, uh, class officers and staff at Weathersfield High School uh, have been meeting on a weekly basis. Um, we have schedules pretty much honed in at this point in time. Um, we are going to be getting out more information with regard to step up ceremonies, both at the middle and the elementary levels as well. Um, so we're getting to that point where we're getting close. As a matter of fact, as I look at the calendar, uh, we are exactly one month from graduation evening over at Weathersfield Cove. So it's got a nice ring to it. Um, and with that, that's communications this evening. Thank you, Mr. Carey. Thank you, Mr. Emmett. Moving on to action items. We have no action items tonight. Moving on to reports and discussions. Board members, check your packet. There are board meetings coming up. If you cannot make it, please let the chair of the committee know. Board of Education is meeting held. Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, the WEC, on 5-10-21, Ms. Granado. Okay, Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative met on Monday, May 10th, 2021. The mission of WEC is that all Weathersfield children, birth to eight, are healthy, developmentally successful learners and connected to the community. It was a long meeting, a very good meeting. And at this meeting, we um, focused on equity and early childhood. And we were introduced to courageous conversations. Also, um, we had a family and early childhood coordinator, Kim Bobbin, was telling us about how she is ordering scholastic books for ESL family learning programs with a multicultural focus. The Yukon PEP class of 2021 has two community projects going. One is a diversity bike down in Old Weathersfield on the um, bikes on Maine, and also welcome baskets. Weathersfield Public Schools have a new initiative to hire minority teachers. Michael just talked about that. We're hiring seven math cu curriculum specialists, two family liaisons, social and emotional learning course um, curriculum, clinical mental health supports, and more with ESSER funds. The new summer, we will continue learning across the summer session with a class program. The Weathersfield Library is getting ready for virtual school visits. Um, the library is currently auditing their collection for diversity and inclusion. Park and Rec is working with Weathersfield Public Schools to offer summer camps um, in schools this summer. The YMCA, Robin, Tebolt is the new talent acquisition manager. She is looking to introduce a new equity learning and engagement position. Robin is part of the YMCA anti-racist task force and DEI task force. They make 29 recommendations to the board and their board approved uh, 40,000, 30,000 towards 29 initiatives, including internships and training, Adult Ed, a GED for adults this summer. Um, we're grateful for the Hamner PTO for posting an ESL flyer. In the future, we can market ESL and GED together perhaps. Um, let's see, we also have Early Childhood Consultation Partnership. Whitney Summers offers free training to providers on multicultural education, race and equity and how to have conversations with children around race. And uh, Faber, Jeanette Hernandez, is a bilingual family support specialist working with families in Weathersfield, Cromwell, and Rocky Hill. Jeanette reported that Faber offers free training and programs for parents. They also offer training on how to talk to young people about race. Jeanette will forward flyers to, uh, to Kim and social services, Erica Texa, uh, Texa Erica is a member of the Social Justice Coalition Steering Committee in Weathersfield. Social services tries to work every day with an equity lens. Right now, the focus is on camp, uh, uh, camp scholarships for youth to attend summer camps and to ensure that all Weathersfield children have equal access to summer camps. Erica also mentioned the primary project. This is an initiative started by Weathersfield High School alumni. 
Um, Weathersfield Open Choice students cannot apply for dollars for scholars as they are not Weathersfield residents. They cannot apply for Hartford dollars for scholars because they do not attend Hartford Public Schools. So this group, this alumni group, created their own scholarship fund for Weathersfield Open Choice students. Good for them. Um, and please refer to the WEC website for all the information that's out there. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Granato. Um, there's a missing meeting. There was a Memorial Day Parade Committee meeting. Mr. Cassio. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, April 14th, the Memorial Day Parade Committee met and all board members should have had the letter of invitation as well as administration. Uh, the parade is uh, a little di different this year. We're gonna be doing a service on Saturday, May 29th at the Village Cemetery starting at 11 a.m. Uh, at which there'll be a short ceremony some speeches and some accolades of individuals uh, that have uh, come forward. The exciting news is that the essay contest took place again this year. And two eighth grade candidates have been selected to read their essays at the uh, Memorial Day Parade uh, on Saturday, May 29th. Uh, that is Angelica Dita, as well as Sophia Barbara, Barbara, Sophia Barbara. So both candidates have been contacted. Uh, the parade will be, uh, committee will be having a meeting tomorrow to finalize it, but uh, that both individuals will be able to read their essays at the uh, Village Cemetery and uh, be congratulated with an award and a, a, a gift card. So we're really excited and uh, it's starting again and it's a new normal. So we're happy. Thank you, Mr. Cassio. Meeting scheduled, Memorial Day Parade Committee 5-12-21. The Facilities and Maintenance Committee meeting 5-17-21. Students, Programs and Services 5-18-21. Correct Council is on 5-19-21. Finance and Operations Committee is on 5-25-21. There is no unfinished business. Mr. Emmett, is there anyone on the phone for public comment? No, I have no one in the queue, Mr. Carey. Excellent. Moving on to board comment. Any board members wishing to make comment? Yes, Tiago. Good evening. So as Mr. Emmett already said, myself and the other class officers have been meeting very frequently with uh, Mr. Emmett and the administration to talk about senior events and um, upcoming events for the senior class. So. All I can say is that the seniors are very excited. The seniors that I've talked to, they're absolutely ecstatic that um, they'll have a more familiar graduation at home or at the COVID that is. And um, also a more formal prom as opposed to, you know, something with, uh, I guess, compromises. So the senior class is very excited for these events. And I just want to thank Mr. Remit and the administration for working so hard for us. So thank you. Thanks to you, Tiago. You guys worked very hard on this. Thank you, Tiago, that's great to hear. Ms. Evans, your hand was up. I'm on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Sweet. Um, we were, I was just checking in um, and I might have missed something because I'm always tired and I'm going in a million directions, but we received a couple of emails from um, parents in the district and um, regarding a rain date for graduation. So I don't know what's going on with that or if there's been, I know everything moves so quickly, um, but I know that there was some concern there. And then I've heard some concern with, um, maybe not concern, just um, parents of students um, that are stepping up to either high school or middle school, um, if they're able to have celebrations and what's gonna happen with all of them. I know our focus is on our our seniors to give them kind of what they've been missing for the last two years. But I didn't know if we had any direction on those other items. Yeah, I'd be happy to uh, respond to that, Ms. Evans. With regard to the rain date, um, we will not have a rain date. Um, it would be a, an alternate location that would be Weathersfield High School. Um, obviously with the current uh, pandemic uh, restrictions, it would be limited in terms of how many people that we could put in to the auditorium. 
and it would be something that we would need to break up the, the class and we would need to live stream. Um, is that optimal? No, it's not optimal whatsoever. Um, but the reality of it is trying to do a rain date. Um, I had a conversation with the parent today, this afternoon. Um, there are many other logistical issues that we face trying to come up with the rain date. And that is if you do it on a weekend, there's an added cost. Um, you're talking, you know, time and a half for town staff, and we'd have to look at paying our staff as well. Um, you couldn't do it on a Saturday morning because you've got the um, DMV open. And then again, if I moved it to, let's say I moved it to the following Monday, I still run the same risk of the potential of rain even on Monday because it's an outdoor event. Um, as I said to the parent today, I'll tell the community, um, it is my intent that we are out at uh, the Cove. Uh, it's going to have to be a virtual monsoon uh, to, to, you know, put that into the high school. I will also tell you, you know, this time of year with regard to the, you know, the, uh, you know, hot and sunny, hot and humid, uh, showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. We will definitely have a plan in place with regard to altering the program in the event that we had heavy weather coming in. We would front load all of the students getting diploma jackets first, and then we would rotate back and focus on student uh, speeches and awards. Gotcha. And then we would cut the event short to get people out safely. So um, we'll do everything we can to make sure that we can uh, get these uh, students graduated at Weathersfield Cove. That's the hope. So I, I mean, I have faith that that's going to happen. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed for everybody involved. If we did, let's say worst case scenario, we ended up at the high school, would parents at least be able to see their kids graduate? No, we would live stream. We're not going to be able to fit it, it, We would do the students. Um, we're talking about 100 students at a time. And if you're bringing in two parents, uh, do the math. We're not going to be able to get that number of people in. So that's why we're focusing heavily on being outside. So again, if, if we're dealing with, you know, drizzle, we're dealing with light rain, bring your umbrellas. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll do what we can. But um, yeah, and it's just, it's unfortunate, but it's the... It's the reality for this year. Um, and then you mentioned also with regard to step up ceremonies for um, elementary and middle school, um, principals will have more information coming out, but at this point in time, they're looking at doing drive-through again for sixth grade. And again, that'll just be for sixth grade and eighth grade. The other grades are not going to be doing any type of drive-through to get their materials. Because remember this year we're in school. Um, I did have a conversation with Charles Brown um, as well as the Department of Public Health um, what I have heard the past two weeks from the Department of Public Health is do not fundamentally change what you have done this year. Um, and that's something we need to take seriously. So, for example, to do right now an, uh, an inside step up ceremony at Hanmer, we, we don't have the space for it. We've reconfigured the cafeteria where the stage now has a, um, a fence up on it <laughs> because that's where we have kids eating lunch. So. Uh, again, I have talked to principals at the elementary and the middle level. They will make sure that there are experiences for sixth graders and eighth graders that they will remember. We will make it as special as possible. And I fully believe, Kelly, that next year we'll be back to the way we used to do it. And that's what we want to get to. So, Me too. Thank you, Mr. Emmett. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other board members? Ms. Granado. Okay, um, I want to make comments about the Westfield Education Foundation because we meet regularly. We met virtually on Thursday, April 22nd. The foundation's mission is to enhance and enrich our Wethersfield schools curriculum. They did a mini grant program this year with great success. Um, money was sent to most schools as requested by teachers and principals. There were opportunities, there will be opportunities again in the fall and early um, and every year to request the mini grants for classroom and school activities. The foundation is also working on our teacher thank you program. And as Michael talked earlier, this is the year to say thank you. I can't imagine a more important year to say thank you for our staff's incredible job during this difficult time. There's a flyer that's going out. Um, it should have been um, sent to each child to bring home. And this flyer will explain um, how to get a great gift for your teacher 
This program runs until June 12th. For more information on the workings of the foundation, check their website and read the many articles written about the foundation's workings in the rare reminder. And I just have one more thing to say. And it's finally a, a really a very loud boisterous shout out to the authors, our principals of the Friday update. First, it was the most informative. And secondly, it's as if you didn't skip a beat putting us all back together again. So I thank you for the Friday update and I thank you for putting it all back together again. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Granato. Anyone else wishing to make board comment? Mr. Cassio. Thank you, Chuck. I'd just like to uh, also uh, ditto what uh, Superintendent Emmett indicated regarding the teachers and their appreciation of what they've done over the last year and a half. And it's uh, monumental and uh, a new path that has been discovered and hopefully we won't have to go down that path again, as well as the nurses um, and what they performed and did. But it's not only them, but everybody in the community. It's about Weathersfield and how we came together as a community to make it through where we are right now. And with the uh, restrictions being lifted as of May 19th in Connecticut, and each district has their own ability to perform in their own direction. I think we're in the right frame of mind and moving forward in a positive reaction. So I think with that, I can't thank everyone enough for all the hard work they've done over the last year and a half, whether it's an appreciation or not. It's just really fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cassio. Mr. Lesser. Well, thank you, Chuck. Um, Mr. Cassio said it way better than I'll be able to say it. So I'll be very brief. A big thank you to our teachers in this extraordinary year, probably the most difficult year ever in education, certainly in our lifetimes and our nurses as well. And Mr. Cassio said the, the whole community, educational community and the Weathersfield community, just, just amazing to, to get through to the end of this year. So uh, John, as I said, said it better than me, but big thank you to everyone, our teachers, nurses, and the whole community. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lesser. Any other board members? All right, seeing none, do I have a motion to enter executive session? So moved. Second. So say thank you, second. Uh, Chuck, you want me to read that motion? No, uh, we're not, uh, oh, one motion. Uh, is that the one to talk about uh, a personnel issue? I mean, the appointment issue? Yeah, I just think we need the motion to go into executive session. I don't I, think we have to. I, well, no, I think you got to spell out why you're going to executive session, if I'm not. Okay, if you, do you have the just motion? To make a formality. Uh, okay. I, they, they've written my script for me. I don't want to miss my uh, opportunity here, but I think we have to give the reason for doing it specifically under FOI. So okay. if you don't mind, I'll make the motion and then someone could second, I'll read it out. So I move that uh, the Weathersfield Board uh, of Education leave public session, enter an executive session at uh, 7.30 p.m. for purposes of discussion and possible action on appointment of principal for High, High Crest Elementary School. Do I have, I just need a second. Second. Thank you. Do, do we have a second on the new motion? I apologize. Okay. It's okay. Second. Thank you, Mr. Lesser. All right. Now we're good. Now we just got to Any vote. comments? Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank good you. Good night, everyone. everyone. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Matt. Hi, guys. Good Thank night, you, everyone. Thank you, Tiago. Good night. Thank you. Good night.